Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're joining from. Thank you so much for joining us today to have this candid, interesting conversation. And the topic today is going to be the ABC of investing. And with me are two interesting guests, industry experts. On my right here is Anthony, the Group Managing Director of All Mutual Investment Group. And on my left is Robert Ocheng, the co-founder and CEO of Abudani Investment. So kindly stay back and join the conversation. Now, um, Anthony, I want us to talk about a little bit about yourself. Just uh, tell us what you do. And uh, yeah, the audience will be more than in, yeah, is interested to really know about you. Thank you, thank you for that. So, so as you've heard, my name is Anthony Mithiga. Um, I work at All Mutual um, as managing director of the All Mutual Investment Group business. Um, professionally, it's called asset management. Um, I've been doing what I'm doing for the last 25 years, um, mainly helping individuals and companies. Um, um, access investment opportunities, whether locally or internationally. Uh, by locally, I mean Kenya uh, um, or East Africa in general. Um, yeah, and um, I went to school to study math, economics, and finance. Um, and I can't wait for us to, to, to have this conversation. Oh, yeah, thank you. I love that. Thank you so much, Anthony. And we actually share something in common. Uh, since we studied maths and economics, I am also very passionate about data, and I believe that is also something that Anthony is passionate about. So yeah, we are very much interested to hear more uh, about Anthony. Now, on my left is Robert. Robert, kindly tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Robert Utsieng, uh, CEO and co-founder of Abojani Investment. So at Abojani, what we do is to champion financial conversations conversations such as this, uh, so that people can be informed and they can make uh, informed decisions in terms of uh, where they want to invest confidently. So with the conversations, you'll get to know the right tools, investment options, what to do, where to get information, especially in the information age, and then how to grow together with your friends and family and uh, become wealthier. So that's what we do in different social media channels, such as X or uh, formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank yeah. you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much, Robert. I think uh, from now, um, the audience is really interested in knowing, like, first of all, over and above your professional journey, your investment journey. How did you start investment, uh, investing? Or rather, what was your first investment that you did? And what, is, what was your experience? Yeah, that's a nice one, yeah. Um, my first investment was actually getting a girlfriend. I'm joking. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, so, <laughs> please do. Um, I think for any person, the investment journey is, is a demonstration of the appreciation that, um, that they need an extra coin for a rainy day outside their, their formal sources of income. So, back... 25 years ago when I left school, um, I was an intern at Citibank and, and, and I, I had some little money and uh, I started getting interested on what to invest in. And um, that time, today, we didn't have the opportunities or, or securities or, or, or investment options which are there today, uh, especially for our young people in the country and globally. Uh, but the first thing I invested in, and I was telling Robert earlier, I joined the circle because it looked like it's fashionable, it's a must, and a mixture of the two. And um, the main reason for doing that was for me to get access to credit or to get access to a loan and buy a car and start driving very fast. Um, fast forward, I've, I've, I've now professionally understood investments, help people or organization invest. Um, if I might say, one of the uniquest investments I've ever done, mm -hmm. um, some 15 years ago, I bought parking space. Or I bought parking, I, I bought a parking bay. Because um, 15 years ago, parking was rare in, in any building you go into 
in, in, in even you could miss parking in a mall even if you want to pay for it and um, I had a very difficult discussion with, with, with people in my house telling them that parking is part of property, it's part of real estate uh, because it's just a space where you'd leave your car um, and by then uh, uh, buying parking space was not a was not a very common thing like it must have become today and um, if I think about any investment I've ever done which is outside my comfort zone was buying space uh, I don't think I'll do that again um, because um, parking is nice everywhere yeah, yeah thank you oh, wow no. thank you so much Anthony for that I think one thing that I'm picking out of this conversation with you Anthony is being able to identify unique opportunities before anybody else and just diving right in thank you so much Anthony over to you, Robert. We are so much interested. What is your first investment and how, what was your experience? Yeah, so, so I think for me, uh, my first investment, I think, would be what most professionals typically do. So once you, you get a job, uh, you become an expert in managing a business through your phone. Yeah. So it, it's known as side hustles. <laughs> <laughs> so for the first four years after getting my first job, I tried several side hustles. Uh, and all that happened was, the, was that the money was going and I was spending a lot of time making phone calls and in the long run nothing happened. So I realized that that, that was not a sustainable way to do things and uh, I was lucky enough to get an opportunity to work in a bank where I learned about the, now the formal financial services industry in terms of investment and started doing things now slowly, uh, consistently to build a defensive portfolio and realized that that portfolio can actually help you to take more risks. Yeah, uh, but if you start with the offensive ones, like I started with the, the side hustles, and they fail, actually sometimes you can be traumatized, traumatized when it comes to investing, you'll fear investing. So my, my story was different, unlike Anthony's, <laughs> who, who might have gotten it right the first time in side hustle. Uh, but even what, I, what I'm doing now as Abujani is a business, so I moved from corporate now to Abujani. So it's that foundation through formal financial services industry that gave me the capital to be able to have the confidence to now move from uh, a salaried position to entrepreneurship, which is quite a challenge with a lot of roller coasters, uh, but it is good if you have a good foundation. Yeah. Wow, wow. Thank you so much for sharing, Robert. Now, um, I think you brought up a very important topic um, in the sense that when you're salaried, like um, I think I get a lot of DMs from my followers asking, um, we would love to start investing like in you know, shares, treasury bills and bonds. But the only challenge is we have little income, we can barely save. So how do you start that? Let me start with you, Anthony. Like, yeah, so I do not have, maybe I don't even have an income. I'm really interested in this investment product. So how, how do I start? Yeah, I think that's, that's a very good question. And I, so there are three stages which will lead to you calling yourself an investor. And unfortunately, the choice is it's not binary, it's, it's one. And um, it starts with a simple process. You have to get skills. And how do you get skills? You just have to go to school. <laughs> and that's why people spend a fifth of their lifetime acquiring skills or going to school, or their first 20 years of life just going to school. Um, after that, three things have to happen for you to, to start enjoying um, a saving investing life. So the first thing is you have to be gainfully en engaged. And I say gainfully engaged, not, not employed. Um, it's nice I'm here with Robert, who is the opposite of myself. He's an entrepreneur, I'm an employee. Both is a representation of, getting, of being gainfully engaged. So you need to earn an income. The first step is to earn an income. Not forgetting that you came from skills. Because today, skills attract capital, or skills attract entrepreneurs like Robert, or skills attract employers like Anthony. So once you get engaged economically, you earn an income. The second stage after earning an income is saving. 
You know, saving is not investing. Saving is putting some little money away from your gainful engagement for a rainy day, whether for a purpose or no purpose. Sometimes you can save just because you feel you don't need to spend the money or you're yet to find out how to spend on it. Or you want to save because you really want to build towards something. You want to go back to school, you want to travel, you want to go on holiday, you want to buy an equipment on an electronic gadget you like, for many reasons. Or you just want to feel safe by saving. But the motive is not a return or profit. The motive is just to build a safe pot of, of money. Now, once you, you get a bit comfortable with saving, savings, you need now to gravitate to investing. Because now investing, you are seeking a higher return and you have a slightly appreciation there might be risk attached to gaining that return. And you, have, you, you also understand there are other factors in investing which are beyond profit, income, ETC. Now there is risk, there is how do I get my money back, there are other concerns you're starting to get. So for me, if, I'm, if I, I just repeat myself, towards the journey of interacting with money is get a skill. Use, use the skill to get economically or gainful engaged as an entrepreneur or as an employee. Then number three, start saving. Then number four, start investing. The money you had saved starts becomes the money you are investing. Just like the way Robert did. He worked in the financial services for many years. He must have saved to use that money to become an entrepreneur. Yeah, thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Anthony, for that. You've had four layers of building yourself. One, he's talked about having the right skill set. Two, being gainfully engaged. Three, saving. And la lastly, investing. Thank you so much, uh, Anthony, for that. Robert, how do I start investing? I don't have any income. Yeah, so that's a very good question. And you get a lot of questions along that line. So I'd say, first of all, uh, like Anthony has said, you need to find a way to create value. And creating value, uh, you also must capture the value. So it means that uh, you are maybe working somewhere as a professional or an entrepreneur, and then you get rewarded for that. And that's actually the most sustainable way to venture into anything. If you are a professional and you have expenses and you are not being paid, you won't sustain it. If you start a business and you are creating value for people, uh, they are happy, you have likes, retweets, but no money is coming home, you won't sustain it. So it's very, very important to find the sweet spot of being able to create value while you get paid. Because if you are paid, it means you can create more of the value that you're already creating. So like Anthony said, that's the first and most important thing to do. Then to sustain it, it's to always look at how much more can I do? You know, in whatever profession that you are in, uh, do you need new skills? Do you need networks? Uh, because again, for you to create value, most of the times you need to know people, organizations, uh, the right networks and platforms. And that also means that if you are young, you need to look at uh, three things. So young people struggle with who are their buddies, who, they are, who are their friends, and who they need to be friendly to. So buddies are th people that you'll have fun with. So you can go for sherehe, you have fun, and that is it. No one will ask you about your CV <laughs> or how you're going to earn an income. They're still good. And if you're young, you are biased to spend a lot of time with them. Uh, but you also need that friends that the poor will come through for you. They'll support you, you know. Like if you need to attend an interview and you don't have means, they can support you and you get there. So that's a friend. A buddy will just tell you, uh, just keep your spirits high. All, all, is, all will be right but they might not act to help you. Then our friendly are just people that you network with. You just need to be cordial, and that is the end of it. So it's important to know the right networks. And in the age of social media, things like your website, uh, your LinkedIn profile, Instagram, sometimes they can speak on your behalf. Because I usually tell young people that no one stays in your head to know who you are, and no one stays in your computer to know what is in your CV. So it's important to express yourself in a way that can make us believe in you if you see an opportunity somewhere, we'll have you top of mind. 
and then you make that connection. So networks like at school, uh, if you are in school, don't just say that you are, you are an introvert or you are a backbencher, you know. Everyone will forget about you, you'll finish school and forget about you. <laughs> but if people know you, they'll uh, pick the phone, they'll call you and they'll be able to assist you. So it's important to have that layer and keep expressing yourself. If here there's AI that has come up, try to figure out how it is going to help you in your job. Because I remember like in 2015, I trained members 2005 of a certain bank on Microsoft packages. And believe you me, if you had those skills, you'd be considered a genius at the workplace. <laughs> Everyone will come to your desk. So you can see things change and you need to know now your specific area. If you are in the medic space, uh, if you are in the creative arts economy space, like you are a YouTuber, TikToker, you should know that you are creating value and then you capture it and grow over time. Then after that, now you look for Anthony uh, and other organizations who can give you now the skill set and the tool set. So with that one now you can kickstart your journey and you should see an investment as an extra hand. Mm -hmm. So as you work on your day to day uh, job or business, the investment will also be working just as hard as you are working. So with that way you're able to propel yourself faster towards your life goals that you might have. Probably you want to buy a car, you want to start a business, you want to go back to school, etc. So look at investing that way if I have to start with nothing. Wow, mm. wow, you've heard that. Know the difference between buddies, friends, and friendly people. Friend, friendly people. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're writing notes because the gem that we're getting out of this conversation, I don't think you were taught this in school. So yeah, now, as young people, we always hear, start investing early, start investing early. So what are the benefits of you know, investing early? Like, what is there for me as a young person? Wow, that's the, I, 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 you know, I love these questions for this session. Um, they're properly curated to, to, to enlighten us. So why, why start saving early? Why start interacting with money um, in, a, in a cordial manner? Don't, 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 don't fight with money. Don't, don't have a conflict. <laughs> why, do you, why do you need to start having the right relationship as early as possible? There are three reasons why it's good to start having a relationship with money early, especially in terms of saving. One of them is the best sustainable way of developing and retaining a good habit mm -hmm. is culture. So starting to save early, you are still coachable, you are still trainable. You are still, you can adopt to, to new ways of things. You are not as old as Anthony. So you, you, you can build a culture of realizing that if I have 100 shillings, it's okay not to consume 100 shillings. Mm -hmm. So you start building the culture of saving. Um, so the earlier you start, the, the earlier it becomes part of your life. You must have friends who anytime they have a thousand shilling, whatever they're doing, there's a chance they will not consume all of it. And the vice versa is there. The others who have the same thousand shillings, they'll come home with nothing. The only thing they're worried about is the amount of money to take them home, either to pay a border border or to pay a, 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 a taxi, whichever mode of transport, or is fuel, or even to get a ride. So, if you start early, the benefit you get, you make it part of your DNA. It becomes part of your culture. And, um, and, that be, and, and the, you institutionalize yourself with that mindset of, I should always keep something for a rainy day, even if I don't know what I'm going to do with it. That's the first one, why you should start early. The next one is... Um, You have to accept that uh, there's something called the power of compounding. I mean, I know our audience is full of uh, uh, highly educated professionals, uh, friends and colleagues. If you are a mathematician or economist or financial person like me, well and good. You must have spent your school in time learning about compounding or the compounding interest. What does it mean? It means what? Compound, the, the power of compounding is the tool which enables money to multiply faster 
even though you are not adding more money in the same pot or in the same serving or in the same account. And what does that mean? It means the interest you earned last month, which is payable this month, becomes new principal. And when you add with the old principal, which has generated that interest, you have a new principal amount, interest plus income, and that figure of two is compounded. I hope I've not lost us. And, 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 and that has more effect if it's done for a longer period of time. If you take a simple Excel worksheet and you compound anything for 36 months and you compound, you, you compute the compound interest and you do it for the same 36 months for simple interest, you'll see the difference is, is, is unbelievable. So starting early helps you enjoy the power of compounding. The third reason for, for starting early uh, in saving, and this is, this is really important, it forces you to start thinking and developing the right uses and behaviors of money. Because, and it builds ambition in you. It, it just shows you certain things which are extremely out of reach are actually in your reach. You'll realize anytime you hear something like buying an air ticket, it's, such, it's, it's, it's very expensive. It has to be paid by a parent, by an employer, or and if you are young. But when you realize the money you've saved can actually make you do something which is unimaginable, which a person of your similar age group, economic status, or profession cannot do, you discover it is empower you. So it's really an empowering thing if you start early. Um, that's why you see same quality of training, same skill set, same age, same profession, sometimes same employer, same opportunity, same town, same country, same income level, but the two or three people can do different things. Why? It's just because of their relationship with money. Um, and, and, and that can only be part of you. Ukianza mapema. Si tunasema gama mapema ndiyo best. Or that is still valid. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank no. you. Thank you for that. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Anthony. So you've had guys. Why should you start investing early? One, to build that culture. Two, the power of compounding. Again, Albert Einstein said that the power of compounding is actually the eighth wonder of the world. And you've already, uh, Anthony has given us a very good example. Just take an Excel sheet and just do the simulation. You'll be surprised. And the other one is to empower you while you're still young. So thank you so much, Anthony, for those uh, wise nuggets. Robert, why should I start investing early? Like, Yeah, uh, like Anthony has correctly put it, uh, when you start early, it becomes part of you. And that's why they say that money is silent. Because once it is in your DNA, you don't need to show off anything. Yeah, it is natural. And it's actually an unfair advantage if you, <laughs> if you figure it out. Like I told you my story, in the first four years, uh, my idea of money was depletion. When you get it, uh, then you lose your mind. Then you only take a pause after it is gone. So you can do that even for 20 or 30 years. But see now the opposite of it, where you figured out what I call value-based spending. So value-based spending is to say that if I were to get this amount of money, this is what I'll use it for. And you say now when you're planning to uh, use money, you look at paying bills, uh, you look at living life and saving and investing for tomorrow. So that's how to live a balanced life financially. And uh, some people might have opinions such as, why can't I have all the fun in the money? But the truth is, and some don't tell the story, uh, they can have one day of fun when the salary has checked in, and then 29 days of misery <laughs> every month. <laughs> That's very familiar. So you just see them <laughs> that one day when they are all over. So it's, it's, it's good now to make that connection. And when you start now planning and budgeting, you now make connection with investing because you want to accelerate your path toward achieving your goals. It could be starting a business, going for a holiday, you know. So if you put 20,000 Kenya shillings per month, you know at the end of the year you have 240. Plus interest, you have another. 
20,000. So actually your man is like a servant working on your behalf and is one of the best servants. So some people say that the rule of money is save me today and I'll save you tomorrow. So it has no emotions. <laughs> if you don't save money for holiday, my friend, <laughs> if it reaches December, you'll have nothing. So you'll just be seeing people busy with vibes, you know. You wonder what the hell is going on. Yeah, so once you make that connection that you need to go for holiday, you need to go back to school and you start saving, it becomes natural. And then you'll just see that the dreams and aspirations that you have in life, uh, the man is like your silent life partner that is helping you to achieve these goals. So the, the younger you start, the better. And uh, even these days, retirement is just a, a certain amount of money that you need. Mm -hmm. It's not about the age. So if you feel like you can do it by 35, by 45, uh, you start and you'll enjoy the benefits. And you'll get a lot of time to do the things that you really love. So instead of working for money, you'll be working because just something to live for. Yeah, so maybe you like football, so you can be spending time with young people in football academy. Mm -hmm and then they, be, they can become the big superstars. So we've had the story of South Sudan, whereby someone, because they had money, helped the young people there to become great basketballers, and they went even to the Olympics. So those are the things that people, money can do. So here, as we blame KFF and government, <laughs> someone said, let me do it, simply because they have money. So there's a lot of power in that. Beyond your personal goals, dreams, and ambition, you can actually express yourself more in life. And some of the greatest things that we've seen in life is because people had excess money and they said, let me try Facebook, let me try Microsoft, and it worked, and now all of us are using it. So it's important now to elevate yourself uh, and always talk about abundance. So you can only do great things if you are not worried about basic things like food <laughs> or <laughs> airtime. <laughs> so, so the thinking that we have is what now innovation and creativity, because now you're able to express yourself uh, beyond just the basic needs. So it's important to start building that as a young person and see yourself as a vehicle for creating great things in life. So I see as, as bridge builders. So if there's something that you want to see in the world, uh, you can visualize it and with financial resources, you can actually bring it to life. So I'd really encourage young people, get started. So there's enough money for sherehe, <laughs> for paying bills and doing the things that you love, you know. And some of them can be an extension of what the world needs, yeah. So, so that's why how powerful investment is. If a family uh, has investment, their sons or daughters might not be limited to just looking for job opportunities. They can say, actually, let's start this business. And that's why here, uh, certain organizations started like that and they be became very big. Yeah, so it's a very, very big tool that you can use as young people, uh, as families, you know, as households, you know, to bring so many things to life and live quality life, you know. So we are not just passers-by. We are not just here to be counted as statistics, <laughs> to say how hard life is and tough. It can be tough in a few years when you are street fighting, but with your savings and investment, it can get better over time. Yeah. Oh my God. I love these conversations. I mean, if you have to forget everything, just remember, money has no emotions, and save me now, I'll save you tomorrow. Well, so kindly, that do not nice. forget that. Now, We've talked about young people, and I think in our generation today, we have an advantage over like long time ago. This is like this social media, there's information everywhere. Now, looking at the older generation, there are people who are like, I never used to get this information anywhere. Like now I'm just hearing this now. Where do I start? I feel like I'm late. So what is there for me? How, how do I even begin investing? I feel like time is not on my side. How, what would you say to such people? Yeah, I think that's a good uh, differentiation of the generations. Um, one of the best gifts you can ever have is the gift of time, and by extension, the gift of being young. You make mistakes and you recover, and 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 and, and you move on, and you and you become better. Uh, you, you achieve your better self. I think currently, uh, access to information is is one of the biggest opportunities of believing today uh, it's a it's a huge opportunity you can find anything you want just using your phone uh, and that has really changed everything um, before that the biggest reason why people never did certain things or never became who they should have become they never had information or they have they had ideas which were not known and they never got people to encourage them to, to execute them. 
I mean, um, one of the reasons why uh, um, Robert is, 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 is a successful entrepreneur in his, in his, in his business at Abojani Investments is because he is able to pass information to all of us and use that information and improve ourselves, our financial selves. So, in the past, the only way to get information was three ways. Number one, become someone's apprentice. Just study the person who seems to know what's happening. <laughs> it's almost like if, if, if you want to know what I know, you have to spend time with me. <laughs> yeah. That was it. Become someone's um, apprentice. The second one was what? The old school way. Open a book and read it. <laughs> you just have to do that. You have to spend time in libraries <laughs> or spend time reading things which you think they have the information you need. Mm -hmm. That was very... And then the third one was hang around or be in an environment which was mostly an institution where you'll get what you want. Either in employment, sometimes in church, sometimes in any formal physical interaction with a group or with an institution. That will, that, 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 that's it. If you're very lucky, move around. I don't want even to say travel the world. <laughs> just, just, just move around. Town to town, village to village. If you're very lucky, travel the world. That's how you got information. Today, the people who've been fortunate to travel the world they have experiences which we all admire. But there are people who've never been to those places. But they can describe everything, what happens in those places. <laughs> because the world is in our fingertips. So the access to information, data, or whatever you call it, has changed everything. So as a young person today, you should have an excuse of not doing anything. But the one excuse you should not have is I don't have information because the information is, is all of us. You are listening to us. I'm sure most of you have now read through us. You know us more than we know ourselves uh, using your various tools which you can. Um, and and, and that's, a, that, that's an opportunity and a privilege we should really hold dear. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Anthony. Again, as a young person, right now, the most important thing that you have on your hands is information. Thank you so much, Anthony, for that. Robert, I am 45 years old. I'm just hearing these things right now, investing in bond shares. I've never heard of it. Where do I start? I, do, I feel like I don't have time. Yeah, so the privilege that we have as a Bojana is that we've done one-on-one -on -one session with over 700 clients who have ended up investing and they're across different age groups. So you have situations whereby even uh, siblings have come up and raised money for their parents. So what we've seen is that ages, you are, whatever age you are at, uh, there's still a lot of time, even 45, if you look at the power of compounding, because naturally by 45, you are likely to be earning slightly more, and you can see the power of just putting even 100K Kenya shillings per month. In a year, it will be 1.2 million. If you compound that in 10 years, you'll comfortably retire with good money. So it's very, very important for you to make that connection, that time is your best friend. And the moment you realize that you need to achieve a certain objective. If you are 45 and you are looking at retiring with a passive income of, let's say, 100,000 Kenya shillings, 200,000, if you use a compound interest calculator, you'll be surprised at how easy it is with time and the right information and now connecting with the journey from here to that goal. Which still, even the people that you admire currently, that people that will be surprised at age 50 or 60 that they are not looking at their retirement or even saving and investing. Yeah, so that's why it is important to know that we miss out on the goals because we have the goals in terms of emotions, but we rarely look at them logically. Like if you want to build a home, how much you do you need? So you'd be surprised that probably you need to buy a piece of land worth two million and you can achieve it in three years. Then once you have the piece of land, you have another five years to save and you build the home. So when you look at things logically, uh, you are likely to find solutions that would work. But if you look at them emotionally, uh, you'll be overwhelmed. And that's why now we encourage people. And given the uh, kind of output that we've had, I've seen people who are 
age 39 and their problem was very simple. They didn't know how to say no to their relatives. <laughs> so actually you teach people to say no even to their parents. Tell them that I gave you, I'll be giving you 20k per month. So we jipange neo 20k, ikiisha ngoja tu hata mungoja salari yangu. Then they're surprised that because of that they're able to save more. So they're like, where was I 10 years ago? So usually they tend to be simple problems. Sometimes it can be debt. And we can tell them, since you're getting uh, a loan from a bank at 18%, can the circle take it over at 12%? So there are different strategies. And people realize that actually there are solutions to most of the problems that they have. And some problems uh, with people, especially that older generation, uh, they are addicted to what we call doing projects. So when they start working at age 24, they're just doing, they, they feel like if they're not doing a project, they're not living life. So I'll tell them, please take a pause from all the projects. Just live three months without doing any projects. <laughs> Save even 50k per month. Now one utamua your pesa maluna work. And they're surprised that actually with that method they can be able to save more. Because mm -hmm. they'll tell you their story. Uh, they started maybe by doing the fence for their parents, you know, then water tank, then building the houses for their parents. After that, uh, their siblings. 20 years are gone and they have nothing aside. But we tell them, create a balance, you know. Yeah, create a balance so that in your budget there's a pool for helping other people and then there's a pool for yours. Uh, because what happens now with saving and investing is that uh, there's something we call yo-yo, which is you are on your own. Yeah. yeah. So all the poor are struggling in retirement. They'll tell you how they did great things for other people. But there's no guarantee that they'll come through for you when you are in retirement. There's no guarantee that if you have an emergency, they'll come to assist you. So it's just to create that balanced approach. But time is always on people's side. I've seen that with a money market calculator, if you put aside even 50K per month, in 10 years, you'll have 10 million. Very few retirees have that kind of money. So age 45, you still have crazy time ahead of exactly. you. Yeah, it's that connection that this is what I want. And you have to accept to change your ways. Yeah, so I usually say that that age, you need a little bit of panel beating, you know, changing <laughs> things at that age is not easy. So usually we are very keen on them. They're the clients that I'm very close with. Yeah, if they need a Zoom session, I'm available. They're not like young people who can figure out things faster. So they need more of hand holding. But I've seen between three to six months, uh, they can be able to get used to uh, the new way of things. And doing is actually the best motivator. Yeah. yeah. So once they start doing them, they, they'll start visualizing mm -hmm. the path to the X amount of money that they want to achieve. So it's important to just take your time and realize that uh, once you get the information, uh, that is actually the right time. Yeah, we've had people have come up with great things at age 50, 60, it's all a matter of using your capabilities. So you might have the right experience, skill set. I've seen people who didn't even know that they can monetize their skills like become consultants. Uh, as SMEs, we struggle with things like taxes, you know. SMEs will tell you that there's this VAT that I paid somewhere, I didn't know that it is input tax, a lot of jargons. Yes. Then the accountant said, oh, that's very simple. Then you realize you can save money from that. Then you'll tell other SMEs, before you know it, that accountant or tax expert has gotten clients. And it's something that they can just do three or four hours in a month and they're getting 50K or 60, you know. So there's a lot that you can do. So age also comes with a lot of benefits, what we call intangible assets or wealth. So it's just how you package it as a capability so that it can add onto your portfolio of investment. Wow, I love, love this conversation. Uh, as, we, as we're coming to the end of this conversation, I just want us to touch a little bit about like investment opportunities in the Kenyan market. I know there are people in the diaspora who are watching us today and they're like, I want to start investing back home. But there's also that fear of, I'm not so sure about giving the money back to my relatives because we've had um, instances whereby someone is contributing towards building a house back home and then when they come to retire, there's nothing. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, just to touch on investment opportunities, uh, both locally for people who li are living here and also those in the diaspora, what are yeah. these kind of opportunities? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, yeah. The, that's the interesting part, mm. investing opportunities. Uh, um, and by the way, this, is, this can be found anywhere. So Robert and I are not going to to invent opportunities. We're just going to reinforce yeah. what is available for all of us. Mm -hmm. so remember we had said the journey of investing starts with, with earning, then goes to, I mean, sorry, get, getting a skill, mm -hmm. earning, saving, then investing. So at investing level, there is an assumption that you've ticked box one, two, and three. You, you, you have a skill, you have gainfully engaged a 
as an employee or an, or an, or an entrepreneur like Robert. And thirdly, you've been saving, so now you want to invest. So, again, investments are classified in similar three buckets, what we call low risk, medium risk, and high risk. And the difference is just the level of return or the, the, the ability to make more or lose more yeah. or make little and lose less. You know, risk and return are two twins which can be separated. Uh, and we should, be, we should always be aware about that. So some of the opportunities available at a low risk level, which are the best to gravitate from saving to investing, is what is famously in this country called as money market funds. Mm -hmm. In fact, nowadays it's just been called money market. The word fund is not there. <laughs> and a money market fund is just a, is, is an example of a unit trust product. Good returns, I must say, well secure, highly governed, properly regulated, offered by reputable institutions, for example, us as all mutual, etc. etc. So, 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 so that is an opportunity there. And please, whether you are young, old, rich or poor, you need a money market account. I can tell you. It's, it's, it's something which we all need. Then, the, then there are other things within that bracket of low risk. There are usually treasury bills um, issued by the government of Kenya through the central bank, three months, six months, 12 months. Um, if you have a good relationship with your bank, you can still get a bank deposit in your bank, any type of bank deposit, whether it's fixed, call, term, deposit, whatever they call them, or anything which pays interest, interest, income, there's a likelihood it's low risk. The higher risk starts coming in in terms of the length of time and who is, who is issuing that instrument and, 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 and lastly, does the value change? or the principal does it change. So that's low risk. In the middle, you start becoming comfortable with a bit of risk, but because you want high return, because you've done the basics. You're not worried about the basics of life. Uh, you're not worried about losing money. You, are, you, you have a safety net. If, middle is, if in the middle collapses, you have investments in the lower level. It's a, you fall back. So in the middle there, you start having longer term investments like bonds which are still secure, but the, their value changes uh, because of, 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 of something in our, in our investment world we call they have an inverse relationship with, the, with the, the direction of interest rates. When interest rates go up, by the way, uh, guys, the valuation of bond goes down. It's a very unique relationship which uh, we should study. I like what uh, 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 Robert says. Financial education actually is a life skill. Uh, today now I can say that. I thought it is a, it is a best to have. Yeah. It's actually a life skill. It's not a best to have. Then there are other things in the middle which can earn you more. Uh, debt instruments issued by companies and non-government institutions which pay you. They, they, they behave like a bond, etc. Et in that th level, you can even classify property-related investments. A piece of land provided it has a title deed. Uh, a a house, some things which require a lot more money. Then we go to the top, which is aggressive or high risk. And when it's said it is high risk, it does not mean that you need to run away from it. <laughs> Understand how can I manage that risk? Robert says one of the ways of managing risk is actually, did you say educating yourself or making yourself knowledgeable? So understand why is this investment opportunity being called high risk? Because a low-risk investment can become a high risk. Sending money from abroad to me in Kenya to buy for you a treasury bill or a money market fund, if I'm not honest, becomes high risk. Sure. <laughs> Although the intention is low risk. So at the top of high risk, you have your usual shares or, or in the securities in the stock market. If it's the unit trust, you have what we call the equity fund. Um, now we have now a bit sophisticated opportunities in my, in my life, we call them some more deeply structured products, starting to look like some things we call derivatives, uh, investing in currencies. You know, I should be the first to say, buying 
another currency other than the Kenyan shilling is not an investment. <laughs> no. <laughs> an investment is buying a, a product which is in another currency. By just buying the dollars and keeping them in your handbag or your mattress or your bank account, that is not investing. You're just changing money from one currency to another. So at that level, you need more advice. You need more knowledge. In fact, the people who, are, who seek at high risk, we normally call them sophisticated investors. Either they have highly educated themselves or they are being handheld by an investment professional like, like myself and the colleagues I work with at Old Mutual. So understanding those. Now, if you are abroad today, you are a Kenyan, you want to start building a port back home. You have one advantage. You're holding dollars. I mean, we, we all believe that earning in dollars sounds more superior than earning Kenyan shillings. Mm -hmm. And it is, especially if you're going to spend that money in Kenya where the Kenyan shilling is weakening against the dollar eternally. When I started working, the exchange rate to the dollar was 45 shillings. Today is 130 on average. So it just tells you earning in dollars has an advantage. So if you're sitting especially in, in the diaspora, for example, in the, in, in the United States, you have an opportunity to invest in Kenya for the first time. You know why? Dollar money market funds have become very popular. You can invest here and in two ways. The interest from the dollar money market fund, which is 5% or better, and that is not available in the US, colleagues. I can tell you that um, sometimes when someone makes a mistake, I find myself in the US. So, <laughs> so please know that it's hard to get 5% in the US, which is available tomorrow. It's not tied. It's as liquid as a dollar money market fund. Secondly, you earn from the appreciation because of the likelihood a continuing depreciation of the Kenyan shilling against the US dollar. So please, as a start, if I'm working and living in the diaspora, as for example, the US, and I want to start having a saving and investing relationship in my country, buy a, man, a dollar money market fund in this country. And then you, you, after that, you'll get to more sophisticated stuff. If you have more money and you want to get sophisticated, talk to us. You can also buy euro bonds. I know euro bonds have some meaning because they came with a bit of confusion. <laughs> But there's still eligible opportunity for investing in foreign currency. Uh, thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Anthony, for that. Now, just before we close, just one more. I know in Kenya there's, um, you know, land, maguta, maguta. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so someone is asking, is buying land still a good investment? Yeah, so uh, just to add on on to what Anthony has shared. Mm -hmm. I would just say that when I look at investing, I would look at uh, creating a portfolio. And I've had some of my mentees who started very well, uh, but they came to learn about cryptocurrencies and now they are crazy. <laughs> they're saying that anyone who doesn't have crypto doesn't know what they're doing. That's not how investments work. So it's not good to be polarized about just one investment option. Create a portfolio. So look at the personal finance value chain. You start with the foundations. Don't skip the foundations. So like when you need a place to put emergency fund, something like money market fund would work for you. And even if you have to buy that piece of land, you need capital. You need to put 20K per month. You have 240. Maybe you put 200,000 uh, as down payment. Yeah. So you can see the different vehicles can actually help you to achieve uh, various objectives, including uh, buying land. Uh, as long as you know, the role that land plays in that portfolio. Uh, so I usually tell people to have a journal of investing where you write down why you are buying something. Yeah, so you should know why you are buying that piece of land. Because sometimes people tell me, should I buy a piece of land in Kitengel? I don't know whether you should buy or not. So, so you should know why. And uh, when you look at land, they would be considered hard assets. So sometimes they can be good if financial markets are in distress. Uh, but just ensure that you have a balanced portfolio and you know the role that the land is playing in that portfolio. Then over time, the problem that you might have on this side of the world, uh, we need to be aware that wealth has been financialized. So that's something that blacks globally need to come to life with. Uh, if you are sitting here and NVIDIA is growing to one trillion and we are not part of it, we'll be getting poorer. Yeah. 
because someone who has the shares or have, uh, have invested in real financial markets, when the asset prices rise, they sell uh, as you are trying to negotiate for that house that you are buying, <laughs> they won't have time to negotiate. Yeah. They, they'll actually tell that person, I can even pay you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. so, so that brings now what we call inflation. Because now people who have gotten money in financial market, when they bring it into the real economy, the prices of assets tend to rise. So we need to know that over time, uh, we need to move from accumulation to building cash flow. So the piece of land won't pay for a bill in hospital, it won't pay school fees, you know. And to live life, you need cash. At the end of it all, what are you doing holding? The piece of land, yes. So you need to have that balance. So talk about a portfolio. Uh, I always say start by being defensive. If you are good in boxing and you only know how to throw, to throw the punches, in the sec third second, you'll get a te technical knockout, you know. <laughs> so it's good to be defensive and offensive and to balance. And, be very logical, because even some of the biggest investors in the world who have made money in the stock market, they have a lot of money, things like treasury bills and bonds, bank deposits, you get it. And some people sell shares in their companies. I have an entrepreneur whose company was valued at 300 million. They sold 10% at 33 million and put in a retirement account. So different assets can help you create value so that you live the life that you desire. So it's not about saying I'm a land person, I'm a crypto person. Yeah. So no, uh, crypto won't pay the bill at Java as we speak now, you know. <laughs> yeah, so it's just good to have that balance. Uh, and actually I've invested in crypto, but I don't say, you know. <laughs> so people well, like think that. that you have to say it is when now you are famous. No, no. it yeah. doesn't work that way. Yeah. As long as it is serving you, just keep cool and let it work for you and live your life and enjoy. Yeah. Okay, love that. Mm. No, love that. Can I add something on that? Yeah, yeah. sure. Mm. And for the, us who are here local in Kenya, for example, yeah. don't shy investing internationally yeah. or offshore. And the best way to invest offshore, don't focus on buying the securities. Buy, focus on buying a bunch or a, a combination of securities or opportunities. Abroad, they call it mutual funds or a collection of, 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 of certain securities. The sophisticated young people in Kenya today, they tell me they buy Magnificent Seven. That means it's, it's a collection of all those tech companies in the US, which are sold by some international local brokers with, with presence in Kenya, and you can buy fractional shares, and you are, you are happy. But there's something fundamental I thought I should mention when I talked about low, medium, and high risk. The best investment is not a single security or a single asset class, is, is, is what uh, Robert has hinted and has said, is a diversified portfolio. You need to have some of your money in every segment of the risk return profile of low, medium, and high, in different proportions and in different levels at a particular life of you it's just like driving a car when you are younger you are driving a bit faster when you become middle-aged you lower your speed when you're at my age and above everyone is behind is hooting at you uh, because you're not moving and investing is like that also make sure that your investment portfolio defines the stage you are in life i like what robert said it's good to have hard assets like property and everything but cash is king respect that the investments you are having sh should bring cash flow and cash flow pays bills. Uh, don't be asset rich and cash poor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. parting shot. Do not be as, uh, cash, uh, asset rich and cash poor. So always diversify your portfolio. Now, guys, this conversation does not end here. We've gotten some really positive um, feedback from we should do this more regularly. And um, just to mention is that this conversation is powered by Old Mutual. And um, yeah, so you can follow Old Mutual on Instagram at Old Mutual Kenya. Follow Abujani on LinkedIn and uh, X. And yeah, let's keep the conversation going. And thank you so much for those who've joined from the diaspora and here in Kenya. Thank you so much for also powering this conversation and have a good one. Bye.